Hi and welcome back. This video, I'm gonna go over the waveform arpeggiator. This is a MIDI effect. The way you use it is you drag it before your virtual instrument in the mixer area. And I'm just gonna take it out here and then put it back in so you can see. Before I start that, I have a retro mod instrument set up. My patch is this mix synth. Very, just a very basic synth patch. And I'm going to use the arpeggiator to play chords or break those chords down into notes. So you'll find this under the waveform plugins. Under effects, you'll see the section with MIDI effects such as the MIDI modifier, the MIDI chord player, and the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is new for waveform 11. And when you bring the arpeggiator in, here is the user interface. So I'm going to just quickly explain the user interface. I guess before I do, I'll do a little demo. If I play a chord, I'll just play a C chord. The three notes that I'm playing on my keyboard, which you can see here on the virtual keyboard, it's just incrementing through those, clocking every quarter note. If I change this particular parameter to 1 8th, it will go twice as fast, clocking at eighth notes. Now I hit one of those kind of with lower velocity. So down here at the bottom, we have some things we can do to the input to pre-process that note. So if I turn this on, I can fix the velocity and this sets the MIDI velocity. So if I want that pretty high, all the notes will wind up with the same velocity. The other thing we can do with the input is that it, this plays everything in the note order, like in the actual kind of alphabetical order of the notes. So it'll go C and then on up. If I change it to as played, it will be in the order that I basically entered those notes. So if I roll into the notes or play them slightly out of order, it will just follow however I did it. So you'll see that I'm gonna skip the middle note and like this. And then if we add octaves to that, you'll see that if, if we have note order, it will just ascend. But if we do it as played and I play them, say, from high to low, it'll go high to low and then climb. Or if I play them out of order, like, which is just kind of cool. The other thing is inverse note order. So we'll basically play them. They'll be descending as they go up. If we add another octave to that. So you don't have to have it in the normal note order. You can do it as played. I'll put it in note order. This is the maximum number of voices. And there's this uh, function called key limits. I've not figured out what that does yet, but if I do, I will post that later. Or if you know, you can leave that in the comments. Now, back to the top line. In addition to going up, we can go down. You can latch so that you don't have to keep holding the notes down. You could see on the virtual keyboard, which reflects what I was doing, that um, I wasn't holding down any notes. I just played the chord and then I let go. So the clock has a wide variety of options in here, including things like dotted rhythms, such as this and triplet rhythms. Let's go a little faster here. Or triplet rhythms. Things like that. Now, like, like I said before, this is the number of octaves. There's also a freeze, which will hold what you're doing. It's slightly different. Latch, it will, it will latch in whatever you play. Freeze allows you to hold once you started playing. 
The latch and freeze are very similar, except the latch you hit ahead of time, freeze you hit after you've already played in your chord. Now let's take a look at some of the other options. We have cascade, which kind of goes up and down, making a, some random decisions about it. Very useful. Here's an alternative. And or alternating up and down. And you can see alternating two goes da da at the top. It plays that top note twice. Here's alternating one. Very cool. Random, I really have a lot of fun with this. Random is also very fun to play in drum sounds. Basically, you put it on random, mash in the notes that you want to play, and it will always play only one note per step, which is kind of fun when you're playing around with this. This allows you to do repeating chord patterns. So if you play in the chord, it will play all the notes, but in a pattern. Like that, here's a... Something like that. Let me go to 30 second notes, put it back to random. Sounds like a slot machine. All right, so those are all very fun. We also have modifiers in the timing line. This adjusts the length of the note or the swing, which is basically the delay of the every other note. This is a plucked sound, so this isn't going to be too obvious. Um, but swing will. Let's go to 16th. Oh, not on random. We'll, we'll do alternating one. I'll put it on eighth and then add a little swing. Sometimes with this swing, I feel like I need to take the length down too. And it's really touchy. There is, in a typical drum machine, I would have swing way up here. But it, um, it seems like most of the effective range is in these very low percentages. Now, the other thing we have is random positioning. These add a little bit of human feel to it. Again, these are pretty good if you're trying to use this arpeggiator on drums. This gives you a little bit of randomness on the position, a little bit of randomness on the length, and then the velocities, so it'll sound a little more natural. So we'll do cascade here. So next, I want to arpeggiate a chord progression. And to do that, I want to use a MIDI clip and put in chords. And I'm going to use the MIDI clip. And to quickly get a chord progression in here, I'm going to use the pattern generator. So when I select the clip, if I look in the actions panel or the actions tab of the browser, you'll see pattern generator. If you don't, you can open up this so that you're not filtering it. Pattern generator is one of the things I like to keep starred so that it's in my favorites. I'll click pattern generator. Pattern style will be chords. I want to use a 6415 progression. Now I do happen to know that this is such a common progression that if you look at popular four chord progressions, it's number two on this list. So if I just click that, it puts it in. And then this, will trigger my arpeggiator. I'm going to change this sound. Actually, I'm going to change to a completely different 
synth for this. So I'm going to drag in the new subtractive keys. This one, LPF, low pass filter pluck. So I'm going to go back here. So we'll put the length back to normal. We're going to change all of these back to normal. I'll turn off the input fix because they don't need that anymore. And we'll go up and down. So right away, we're playing something kind of interesting. If I want to add just a little bit of bounce to that, I can turn up the swing. And to also make this interesting, I'm going to copy this pattern by just holding down Command, which would be Control on a PC or Linux. Just repeat this. So go to going to my pattern generator, I can change this to, instead of chord, to a bass line. I'm using a collective instrument, and it's the 802 synth bass. It's one of this Alessandro Cardinal, the very first one, 802 synth bass. So that gives us something interesting to play with. Those are the basic controls for the arpeggiator. There is one big additional thing we haven't looked at. These are the kind of the algorithmic ones, but if we click this button here, it opens up patterns. And the patterns then allow you to either just punch in a pattern here, or you can pick them from this list of all different kinds of patterns that are not algorithmic. So I'll just play through a few of those. This gives you almost a harp-like quality. Typically, you would put the pattern in like this, but you can also offset the pitches if you wanted to. So you can click on any of these cells to put in a note at a step or double click to take them out. If you want it to have some gaps, you can. Or load something else. Now this says how many notes you want. So if we can extend this out, go to eight. If you don't want to use the pattern, you click here. That turns it back to the normal way. If you want to make this a little more interesting on the bass line, you could put the arpeggiator on the bass line, and I did play around with that. It also works in a very similar way, but you can also use the bass presets in the pattern generator, which is quite fun. For example, if you choose maybe a 32 step. Or this one, the Rammstein. A switch bar arpeggiator here to random.
this will follow also the key for the entire song. So if you go up to the tempo track and click on the little C here, we could change this to a completely different key quite easily, like let's go to E flat. One other thing to point out is I do have a little bit of effects on the master section bus here. There's some reverb here. I'll turn that on and off just so you can hear the effect of it. I also have a bus compressor and a limiter just to make it sound a little more unified. So here's what the reverb in and out. So that was an exploration of the waveform arpeggiator along with a little review on the pattern generator. In case you haven't seen that before, maybe that's the first time you saw it. Pattern generator, the arpeggiator are some of the things that really make waveform a lot of fun to work with. Thanks for watching. See you in another video very soon.